Hello. In this Java tutorial, we are going to learn about incrementing and decrementing using prefix and postfix. Before watching this video, you're going to want to have a basic understanding of Boolean expressions. For more information on that, please click on the link to the video in the upper right hand corner of this screen. Some important facts to know. You can increment or decrement the value of a variable using double plus or double minus. Prefix causes a variable to increment or decrement before another operation. Postfix causes a variable to increment or decrement after another operation. Let's write some code and see how it traces. First, we're declaring a variable x equals to 0, and it ends up on the stack. Then we are going to increment it using postfix. It increments to 1. Next, we increment it using prefix. It increments to 2. When the increment or decrement is the only thing on the line, it doesn't matter whether we use prefix or postfix. It's going to behave the same way. Now let's look at an example where it will matter. We declare two variables, y and z, and place them on the stack. Then we have an if-else expression. If y++ plus plus equals plus plus z, we'll run this line of code, otherwise we'll run that line of code. For the purpose of this comparison, y will increment after the comparison is completed, whereas z will increment before the comparison is completed. Both y and z start out as equal to zero. So, for the purposes of the comparison, y equals 0 and z equals 1. This will evaluate to false, and it will execute the code under the else. Notice when we hit the else, we have finished the original comparison, so now y and z are both equal to 1. We output the value b. Next, let's look at some more complex code. We'll declare a variable a and b, a equals 0, b equals 1, place them on the stack. We've got a compound Boolean expression here. We are first checking if plus plus a equals b minus minus and minus minus a equals b plus plus. The two a's use prefix, so they will increment or decrement before the comparison. The b's use postfix so they will increment or decrement after the comparison. These two comparisons have to be treated separately. We'll see how that works in just a minute. So we start by incrementing a which becomes 1. We do not decrement b at this point until this entire expression is evaluated. So now we are checking does 1 equal 1? That evaluates to true. Now that we have completed evaluating this expression, b decrements by 1, so now b decrements down to 0. Now, when we compare these two, we must look at the current values of a and b. In this case, a is again decremented before the comparison, so that brings it down to 0. b will be incremented, but not until after the expression is evaluated, so for now, b remains 0. This will also evaluate to true because 0 equals 0. Notice when we complete the second expression, b has incremented to 1. Since both are true, true and true evaluates to true in the compound Boolean expression, we will execute the code inside the brackets and output the value of a, which is 0, and b, which is 1. Now we're going to look at another example where we have to pay attention to short circuiting. We start by declaring the variables c and d and placing their values on the stack. Next we have another if else. We'll start by evaluating the first expression. c is incremented before the comparison, so c gets incremented to 1. d will be decremented, but not until after the expression is evaluated because it is postfix. So we're comparing, does 1 equal 0? This evaluates to false. After that evaluation is complete, d is decremented to negative 1. 
In this case, since the first expression in this compound Boolean expression is false, and we are using the AND, we do not even need to check the second one, because even if the second one evaluates to true, false and true will evaluate to false. We skip evaluating the second expression because of short-circuiting. As a result, C will never be decremented, and D will never be incremented. Since this entire expression evaluates to false, we move down to else, and then we output the value of C, which is currently 1, and the value of D, which is currently negative 1. For more information, please click on this website or type Assignment, Arithmetic, and Unary Operators Oracle into Google and choose the first result. To see the next lesson in this curriculum, please click on the video link in the lower left hand corner. To see the entire curriculum, please click on the video link in the lower right-hand corner.